remember the Joy and Heartache exhibit that was presented by the Vashon Heritage Museum a couple of years ago. And the exhibit was organized around the phases of the evolution of, Jap of Vashon's Japanese uh, community. Um, my dear friend Thomas Hitoshi Prixma was commissioned to write a poem about that experience. And uh, it is as moving today as it was when the exhibit first opened. Thomas will now share his poem called Home. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. The poem was written to be at the entrance of the exhibit and to refer to the five uh, terms or the five sections of the exhibit, each of which uh, was uh, had a title. And the titles were referring to five eras or five periods in this history. Um, the first was hope, the hope of people arriving to the island uh, trying to make a new life. The second word was struggle, the struggle to make that life, to build families and to build a community. The third is the word trauma, for the trauma of the incarceration. And the fourth, which has already been named today, is resilience. The resilience that people discovered even within the camps and beyond. And the fifth term is the word identities, for the different identities that we all carry and cherish and nurture in our community of communities. Uh, the, so the poem is, is in five parts, and these, uh, the five parts correspond with these five words. And because we live in a culture which has become unacculturated, unaccustomed to listening to poetry, I'd like to invite you to listen. You may even wish to close your eyes, and I invite you to listen as much to the sounds of the words as to their meanings. You may let the sound of the rain intermingle with the words. This, rain which is connecting the nourishing of the earth with the generosity of the heavens. And you may listen for how these five words, hope, struggle, trauma, resilience, and identities may connect with you, regardless of what your own particular connection to Vashon, to the Japanese American <coughs> communities on Vashon, to the communities around us in the Pacific Northwest, as well as to the land ancestors, the Shabbat people, the Coast Salish people for whom Bashan was a part of their land for millennia. All of these people are addressed in this poem and I hope you may find yourself addressed too. This is here. One. Perhaps you have come from across the water. Perhaps you have come from across the plains. Perhaps you have come to this place for generations, centuries on centuries, before centuries existed, a word from another land that has not yet set sail. However you come, you come to this place knowing its places, or hoping to know, hoping in new possibilities. You build the long dwellings for families together, or raise a rough cabin while clearing a new field, or plant many crops on land you can't own, hoping in time to make it your own and call your new home your home, as it had been for you before men with their ships named it for people who might never see it. You are so many people you who are here, even if you seem to be gone. Two, suppose now of all the people you are or could be, you arrive here this time alone from Japan. You leave what you know to work in the fields or to be a man's wife known only from a picture. However you come, you picture a new life. You struggle and delight in family and neighbors. You work with others from near and from far and make a new life beyond your own life. Places to gather, places to pray, places to learn and work for what's right. A world of places and people that connect, knowing our strength together. Three. 
And when the news comes, that they come with questions, you draw on that strength to burn the old pictures, keepsakes, mementos, triflings, treasures, even the dolls in honor of your children, anything that looks Japanese. You draw on that strength as you pass your old church, as you board an old ferry, as you ride an old train and take your two bags into stalls where you'll sleep, heat and dust filling the air. For months and then years you draw on that strength beneath the barbed wire, beneath the metal guns, beneath the incessant unspoken suspicion, the oaths that divide you and send you to fight for a nation that puts you away. You draw on that strength till there seems nothing left. And perhaps, in your case, there will be nothing left. Your land and home gone, your neighbors dispersed. Even these years gone from your mind, a childhood destroyed, hidden so deep beneath layers of pain that even the wound disappears. Four, but you do not give up. You move back or move on. You've learned to endure what seemed unendurable with more grace and more dignity than you'd known you had. You pick up the pieces that are left to pick up. You prosper as you can, or at least raise the children in hope that your children will prosper in time. Though perhaps at the price of silence at the table, stories unspoken for years, or forever, or for now, which extends as long as it must to keep your head high and your heart still healing. For the heart that endures is the heart that keeps beating, resilient and buoyant, even as you pass from this world to the next, passing your heart to us. Five. So look as you look, look down and look up. See the new land as old as our hearts. See the bright sky that shines on us all and know that this story is one and is many. A story about you, even if you've never heard it. A story of us all in all that we are. Parts of one heart beyond what we see, seeking a home that is home to many places, home to many people and stories and faces, all of them welcome and free. Thank you.